We, we will get started. Proverbs chapter four. Um, so if you can turn to Proverbs chapter four, we'll work our way through that chapter today. The uh, song, we didn't sing it, but uh, 491 in the Red Book, God Leads Us Along. I was picturing that mental picture of Chris carrying that dog and uh just to just apply that word god carries us along and that song the last part of that song has that uh away from the mire away from the clay god leads his dear children along god carries his dear children along and that's kind of what we will be talking about today and we'll be focusing on verse 18 of chapter four we'll look at the whole chapter but We'll, we'll focus on verse 18 and that idea of God carries us away from the mire, away from the clay into eternity's day. <clears throat> Proverbs 4.18, my goal is that you'll hear it so often today that you cannot help but memorize it. And uh, <clears throat> so Ron, I'm going to check next week. <laughs> but the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the full day. So, but the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the full day. And if we could uh, open in prayer, we just thank you, Father, for the promises in your word, the promise that you are with us, that you're faithful, that you carry us, that you guide us, that you shepherd us, that you justify, that you purify, that you <clears throat> sanctify us. And we just thank you for those promises. And help us to be you know, invested and engaged in obedience and that trust and obey for there's no other way. Help us to, to, to do that and to uh, be a light in the darkness. I pray for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm not sure how many here are Twins fans. Maybe not too many. Maybe a few. But um, yeah. It was supposed to be a great year, right? Um, they were supposed to be one, among the best teams, and it hasn't quite played out that way. Instead of being maybe the very among the very best, they've been among the very worst. And I'm thinking one of the hardest jobs in America in 2021 is being a Minnesota Twins baseball announcer on the radio to keep it to keep it interesting, to keep it engaged. It's hard when your team has lost three games in a row and they're behind by nine runs and they're they don't have a chance of making the playoffs and uh, how do you keep that uh, interesting? Um, that, that's kind of a challenge, I'm sure. There's always the uh, wait till next year, um, but uh, other than that, a hard job. Um, hard to uh, find a reason for enthusiasm or hard to find a reason for suspense. Um, there's just not a whole lot going on. There, there's little bits here and there, but for the most part. Um, contrast that with the, uh, the writer in Proverbs who has the good news in the midst of painful circumstances, in the midst of all the messes that are in the world, in the midst of all the darkness that's out there, in the midst of COVID, in the midst of Afghanistan, in the midst of political turmoil, in the midst of, um, you fill in the blanks, you know what they are, in the midst of uh, hopelessness, uh, there is hope. Again, Proverbs 418, just painted against that black silk screen of darkness. And then you come to Proverbs 418, but the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until a full day. <clears throat> we'll read all of chapter four, but I, we will focus on that verse because again, we often remember if, Remember one thing from each message, and we can sustain that memory for a while over the course of a year. It's 52 things, 10 years, that's 520. Um, so Proverbs 4.18, the <clears throat> path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. Kind of paints a mental picture, doesn't it? That shines brighter and brighter until the full day. But to start with, we will just do a... a relatively quick overview of the first 15 verses. So we'll read verses one through 15. It says, hear all sons, the instruction of a father and give attention that you may gain understanding. 
And as I read this, look for the look for the verbs, look for the action words. It's I think I counted twenty eight in the first fifteen verses, um, and they're they're word they're, they're verbs with intensity. They're what might, might call them man sized verbs. They're 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 not passive. They're not tepid. They're not lukewarm. They're, there's a drive. There's an intensity to these verbs. Give attention that you may gain understanding, for I give you sound teaching. Do not abandon my instruction. When I was a son to my father, tender and the only son in the sight of my mother, then he taught me and said to me, let your heart hold fast my words, keep my commandments and live, acquire wisdom, acquire understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will guard you. Love her and she will watch over you. you. <clears throat> The beginning of wisdom is acquire wisdom with all your acquiring get understanding prize her and she will exalt you she will honor you if you embrace her she will place on your head a garland of grace she will present you with a crown of beauty hear my son and accept my sayings and the years of your life will be many i have directed you in the way of wisdom i have led you in the up <coughs> upright paths when you walk, your steps will not be impeded, and if you turn, you will not stumble. Take hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked. Do not proceed in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Do not pass by it. Turn away from it and pass on. So again, just struck, I was struck by all the verbs. Um, as it says in James, to prove yourselves doers of the words, not merely hearers. And we'll just pretty quickly just do a quick review of some, some of those verbs, to, starting with verse one, to hear, to give attention, to gain, to not abandon, verse four, to hold fast, to keep my, keep my commandments, to acquire wisdom, to acquire understanding, do not forget, do not turn, do not forsake, love her, acquire, verse seven, get understanding, prize her, embrace her, hear and accept my sayings, take hold, do not let go, guard her, do not enter, do not proceed, avoid, do not pass by it, turn away, pass on. So 28 or so verbs in 15 verses. And um, so Christianity not being a passive, lukewarm faith, but a faith that requires action. Certainly we're saved by grace apart from works, but in response to that, um, we are to acquire wisdom to acquire understanding, to acquire is a, as I said, a, an active word, it's a, an aggressive word, it's an assertive word, to seek it out, to pursue it with determination, to acquire wisdom. You will recall when we started Proverbs, one of our key verses was Proverbs chapter one, verse seven, at the beginning, fear of the Lord, being wisdom, and uh, to exchange our values for God's values. And in week two of Proverbs, we looked at the fact that relationships are essential if you're going to be in a position to provide counsel. And this, that's repeated in Proverbs chapter four, when it appeals to the instruction of a father. So that relationship piece is vital. And the old saying that I've used for decades, they won't care how much you know until they know what, how much you care. Um, Week three, we considered convictions and tastes and prejudice and opinions and then Proverbs chapter four, again, brings out having convictions. It says, for I give you sound teaching, do not abandon my instruction, or in other words, maintain convictions. Week four, we considered the, the heart to heart connection in the Proverbs chapter four, verse 23, we're told to, to guard, our, guard our hearts. And also one other week we talked about uh, Proverbs one twenty three and the idea of turning when we've when we've gone off the right path to turn to His reproof, to uh, to take that breath to think first to count to ten, to uh, recognize that uh, there's a course adjustment needed here. And then as that Proverbs one twenty three says in response to that, the Lord says, "Behold, I will pour out my spirit." I will make my words known to you. So a quick review of uh, what we've covered so far and an overview of Proverbs chapter four. Verse nine, I thought was an interesting mental picture when I started to spend a little time on that. Um, so related to wisdom, prize her and she will exalt you. Verse eight, she will honor you if you embrace her. 
in verse 9. She will place on your head a garland of grace. She will present you with a crown of beauty. May we mature in Christ to the point that, um, and abide in Christ, and to reflect Christ to the point that people see in our lives a, a garland of grace, or as that verse closes, a, a crown of beauty. To be that kind of person that people look at and say, they, they've been with the Lord, they, they know Christ, um, to, to reflect that. And moving on, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 2 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 13 and a few other verses down the road all talk about um, not forgetting. They emphasize, don't forget, don't turn aside, don't abandon. I have a note in my Bible, and uh, I'm not sure who said it. That might be fitting, and I'm not sure who said it, but um, the human habit is to forget. Yeah, we need constant reminders. And as verse 13 says, take hold of instruction. Do not let her go. I view the picture of a sailor whose ship is wrecked and they're clinging onto a board. They're taking hold of it. They're not letting go. It's, it's, a, it's a lifeboat. It's, a, it, it's necessary for preservation. The other thought um, in those first 15 verses, verse 14, I believe, you know, do not enter the path of the wicked. Do not proceed in the way of evil men. Let's slow that down. Um, do not enter. Do not put your toe across that line. Don't, don't cross that line. Verse 15 continues the thought, avoid it. Do not pass by it. Turn away from it. Pass on. The idea being don't even take one step down that road. Not one step. Um, and as I was working on my message this week, it's off, it was interesting how often I thought of that concept. And hey, Terry, what are you doing? <laughs> Where's your thought process going here? Don't take one step down that road. I've heard said that every addict, whatever the addiction might be, and there's thousands of addictions, says at the beginning, they'll do it just once, just once. Um, Second Peter 2.19 says that uh, whatever man is overcome by, this he is enslaved by um, just once. That's where the Bible tells us, don't enter the path of the wicked. Don't proceed, avoid it, pass by it, turn away from it. Perhaps... Uh, 25 years ago, around there. I was out on a run, and uh, there's always gotta be a running story, right? And uh, I thought I had what would be a fun idea. It uh, was a bad idea. And, uh, I, <clears throat> I took a step down a path that I probably should not have taken a step down. And um, once I started, there was really no way of reversing that process. Um, I'd run up to ski slope, and at the top, um, I'm looking at this uh, shortcut on the way down. And uh, it's where the chairlift kind of cuts through the woods. And um, it's, so it's really, really steep. And it's not really meant for people to be traversing or to walk, be walking on. But I'm standing at the top of it, and I think, that looks like a bit of an adventure. I think I'd like to try that just for something different. And so this is a four to 500 foot drop in elevation by the time you get to the bottom. So it's, it's a significant drop. It's more than just the backyard little hill. Um, I could see it was steep. I could see it was a bit slippery. It shouldn't be too bad. I, I got this. Um, <clears throat> it was early April maybe and to condense the story, the little patches of snow and ice that were still left were really slippery. And uh, a little bit of greasy mud on top of the frozen ground mixed with the wet leaves was really slippery. And uh, let's just say that I ended up having, having to sit down 
if I wanted to live. Um, and the rocks that uh, I was sliding across were not really comfortable. And uh, there was really no way of stopping unless I banged up against a tree. Um, the blackberry bushes across the face just weren't, weren't ideal. The uh, dead tree branches going across the side of my leg, that wasn't a lot of fun. Um, and there really was no way of turning around and going back up because it was too slippery. <laughs> um, but when I got to the bottom, yeah, I was a little bit muddy, a little bit of blood, and, and then I couldn't do that again. <laughs> and, uh, it was quite uncomfortable. <laughs> um, one step, if I wouldn't have taken that one step, right, and it, that path took me places that were much more difficult than I thought they would be. And uh, so it is with sin, right? It's um, the path was not kind to me. The trail was, wasn't a trail. <laughs> the woods were not kind to me. And likewise, sin is not kind to the sinner. But you take that one step. I, I got this. I can do this. Well, no. The Bible tells us to stay away from it. <clears throat> don't, don't enter that path. So avoid it. Do not pass by it. Turn away from it. Pass on. Run. Flee. So verses 14 and 15 of that urgent call not to take that one step. That one step. Even it's just a mental step. Don't take that one step down the path of bitterness, maybe justifying bitterness, maybe justifying anger. Whatever, you fill in the blank. Um, don't take that one step down the path of greed. Don't take that one step down the path of think it through in your own life. What, what, what are you tempted to take that one step down sometimes? It's so easy to rationalize. It's so easy to shift the blame. God wants us to be alert, to be responsible. Don't enter that path of evil to, uh, to think first. So kind of two main points today, I think they kind of are just mere opposites. That one step is the path to twilight and darkness, but the path of the righteous, like the light of dawn, it shines brighter and brighter until full day. And so this contrast, those two. And then we'll read the last half of chapter four, and maybe starting with verse... 14 for the sake of context, context to verse 4, Proverbs chapter 14 of Proverbs 4. Do not enter the path of the wicked. Do not proceed in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Do not pass by it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they cannot sleep unless they do evil, and they are robbed of sleep unless they make someone stumble. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the full day. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. My son, give attention to my words. And we get back into the active verbs again. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of, you, of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to you, all, all their body. Watch over your heart with all diligence. For for from it flow the springs of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and do not let devious and put devious speech far from you. Let your eyes look directly ahead, and let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you. Watch the path of your feet, and all your ways will be established. Do not turn to the right nor to the left. <clears throat> turn your foot from evil. So verse 18 again is where we're going to where we're going to center. Um, the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the full day. A few verses preceding that talk about the, the darkness, the violence, and we know what they are. If you watch the news at all, if you listen to anything, it, it's out there, it's all around us. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the full day. There, there is hope in the midst of hopeless, hopelessness. Creation groans, creation crumbles, it's broken. 
Um, even as Christians, we wrestle with despair, with doubt, with discouragement, with futility. You, you fill in the blank. We wrestle with those things. And notice the implication in the start of verse 18. Um, it, it's darkness because the light of dawn is just coming. So it's coming out of darkness Come, as you lead into verse 18. Verses 16 and 17 are dark. Verse 18 is, is the breaking of dawn. Um, the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until full day. With the convenience of electric lights, we don't aren't nearly as dependent on not nearly as dependent, not nearly as sensitive to the amount of light in the day. And I'm, I'm sure 200 years ago, you had to plan your day much more carefully to get things done while it was still daylight. Um, now we just turn on floodlights and this and that, and much less sensitive to it. But uh, even so, I'm guessing that you can probably recall some point in your life, some night in your life, some period in life where you were thrilled to see dawn come. Can you think of a night like that? Maybe you were sick, the kids were sick, um, something was going on. I can think of a night that uh, I went, so just out of high school, you do dumb things, go dumb places, right? Went to a, a party with some people who I thought were friends and uh, that maybe not weren't really friends. And it was not a good night, just outside, not, not, not a good environment. I want to get out of here. I couldn't wait for that first streak of dawn to come over the hill. Um, so um, maybe you can picture something like that in your own life. And so it is spiritually. Um, darkness around us, darkness eroding, causing doubts. But uh, again, the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the full day. Um, and there's a few verses, if we could turn to First John, we're going to look at a few verses that kind of go along with the idea of light, First John chapter 2. Keeping Proverbs 4.18 in mind, um, the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, shining brighter and brighter until full day. And we'll look at verses 7 through 11, 1 John chapter 2. Behold, I'm not writing you a new command to you, but an old commandment, which you've had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you've heard. On the other hand, I am writing a new commandment to you, which, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away. The true light is already shining. So the, the light of dawn. The one who says he's in the light and hates his brother is in the darkness until now. The one who loves his brother and <coughs> abides in the light, and there's no cause for stumbling in him. And it goes on to contrast that, but uh, as we think about light, and then just skip ahead a page or so to chapter 3, verse 1 of First John. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God, and such we are. For this reason, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we're children of God. And not yet appeared as what we will be. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as, just as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Everyone who practices sin also practices lawless, lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. You know what? He appeared in order to take away sin, and in him there is no sin. So I was thinking of verse three, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is, the, the breaking of full day. Um, and then if we could turn to the gospel of John, chapter 14, and look at a verse there. The gospel of John, chapter 14. I think of a story that uh, Chuck Swindoll told many years ago, um, the devil having a garage sale and he would sell greed. He would sell anger. He would sell apathy. He would sell lots of things, but the one thing he would not sell is discouragement because with discouragement, he, the devil could reach deep into the heart of a believer and totally unravel their life. So 
part of today is just wanting to encourage all of us that Proverbs 4.18, um, the, the light of the dawn, the path of the righteous, like the light of dawn, it shines brighter and brighter until the full day. And it's based on Christ, of course, um, chapter 14 of the Gospel of John. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may also be. He will receive us to himself. So going back to Proverbs chapter four. Um, the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, shines brighter and brighter until the full day. Proverbs often refers to path. And I just got to think about that word a little bit, path, way, course. Um, so let's just consider a few things about the word path. The path has a purpose. The path has a destination. Even if it's only to, to see the scenery around, it has a, has a goal. The goal, the path of a Christian is to glorify God. What's the goal, the path of a non-believer is to glorify self, right? Pride. Um, a path is marked by some kind of a, a sign, maybe an informational sign. Maybe, uh, a, maybe it's just a trail through the, through, the, through the grass, a dusty trail. But th there's some kind of a mark to it. And when I set up the uh, cross-country course a few weeks ago for the local cross-country meet up at the golf course, I used probably 100 cones and we used white chalk and we tried to be very detailed with that course so people would stay on course. If there was a gap in the marks, there would be somebody going off course. They'd be going the wrong way. And as it is in cross country, so it is with spiritual things. So it is with God, right? He, he sets up a course. He gives us clear directions. The, 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 the marks, the signs are there. The scripture is there. And we need to follow the, if you want to call them spiritual cones, spiritual chalk marks. Um, and as we do, Proverbs 4.18 becomes a reality, um, all because of Christ carrying us, of course. The path of righteous, like light of dawn, that grows brighter and brighter until full day. I happened to be in, in a place during the race where perfectly straight line, cones marked every 30 feet or 50 feet, nice white chalk line. <laughs> Somebody takes a left. <laughs> There's no reason whatsoever to take a left. That was going nowhere. You know, I, yeah, I could see it on the corner, but th this was a place where they should never have gotten off course. Yeah, there's a spiritual analogy, right? <clears throat> we know, and sometimes we need to confess. And um, thankfully, there was a coach from another team close enough as he said, hey, uh, uh, come on, back this way. <clears throat> um, and so it is spiritually, right? We have a shepherd who says, uh, come on, back this way, <clears throat> um, back on course. So paths, paths have destinations, paths have goals, paths have a purpose, and they're meant to be followed. And lastly, paths can be only traveled one step at a time. And maybe that's, there, there's no shortcut. And maybe that's the key to our short discussion about paths here, that paths need to be followed one step at a time. We're told in Matthew 6, 34, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will care for itself. Today has enough troubles of its own. Today has enough steps on the path of its own. Um, a cross-country runner wants to get to that finish line. They wouldn't mind skipping some of those steps to that finish line. Sometimes in life, we might want to skip some of the steps, but it's one step at a time, one hour at a time. So we, we make one step at a time. <clears throat> what are some of those steps? Well, I choose to cultivate my relationship with the Lord today. Or one, so that's one, one decision at a time. Will I choose to honor my parents in this situation one step at a time? Will I choose to decide to forgive in, in this one step on that path. Um, 
so being present in the moment. Will I elect humility over pride one, one step at a time? Fill in the blanks. Um, you can think much faster than I can speak. Fill in the blanks one, one step at a time. Will I fix my eyes on Jesus? Turn my eyes on Jesus one step at a time. So just as a cross country runner may long to see that finish line, it, it's one step at a time. There, there's no shortcut. Psalm 90 verse 12 says to uh, teach us to number our days wisely. So one day at a time, one step at a time, that in the end, we may present to, to the Lord a higher wisdom. Or we might say, Lord, teach me, help me, empower me, guide me to walk that one, that, to walk that path one step at a time. Until we, until we see him as he is, John, 1 John 3.3. 3. And, uh, and again, that, that path, the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until full day. The path, next phrase is the righteous. And being, I trust that all of us are biblically grounded here. We know, we know who the righteous are. We're not righteous in ourselves. No way, right? right. Um, it's not the religious. It's not the, the person who has the political answers. It's, it's the one who is in Christ. We came near to touching on this verse, first hour, but uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21 addresses that question. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, that we may become the righteousness of God in him. Or Philippians 3.9, and that I may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived through the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. So to be very clear, because there's always that tendency to drift back towards works, to drift back towards what Johnny has talked about in Galatianism. Um, to be very clear, we're saved by grace apart from works, but yet that obedience needs to reflect the fact that we are saved, right? I mean, it needs to reflect that grace. And as, as those two things work in tandem, then the path of the righteous, like the light of dawn, shines brighter and brighter until the breaking into full day. And there's a verse in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 21, that talks about it. As you obey me, as you, as you walk in obedience to me, then I will disclose myself more deeply to you step by step, um, step by step, um, growing brighter and brighter <laughs> till it reaches full day. So as we close today i'm gonna to run through a series of bible verses the idea of <clears throat> we need to be encouraged in christ the world is dark life can seem futile life can be difficult circumstances are concerning and uh, but unlike the twins baseball announcer we have good news and uh, the bad news can overwhelm us there can be difficult seasons i i I think of that, again, that song, 491, the Red Book, God leads us along, some through the fire, some through the blood, all through the blood, <clears throat> um, some through the flood, all through the blood. And uh, Psalm 35, Psalm chapter 30, verse 5 is the first verse I'm going to look at. Um, Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping may tarry. That word tarry. It may linger. It may continue. The difficult night season might continue for hours or days or weeks or months or years, but joy will come in the morning. The we will be like him, for we shall see him as he is. <clears throat> we do not know how long that night season might be. When those night seasons come, somebody might be in the night season right now. But joy will come in the morning. How do we know that? How can we be sure of that? Um, Hebrews, if you could turn to Hebrews, there's a couple of verses there that I'd like to look at. Hebrews chapter 7. 
verses 24 and 25. Chapter 7, verses 24 and 25, speaking of the high priests and the priestly ministry of Christ. But Jesus, on the other hand, because he continues to continues forever, holds his priesthood permanently. Therefore, he is able to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. We could spend weeks on a couple of verses. <clears throat> um, it's a permanent priesthood. It's eternal. He's always, always lives to make intercession, always pleading. He's able to save forever. So other translations use the word uh, utmost or uttermost. <clears throat> Completely, comprehensively, without a crack in the armor. It's, it's a done deal. Um, he saves to the uttermost. Uh, one author I was reading, Dane Ortland, talks about the fact that we all have an area in our life that we know isn't quite right, but the Lord's heart yearns to fill that um, as long as we're not living in defiance, as long as we're repentant. He yearns to fill that. He's able to save to the uttermost, to the utmost. And he intercedes. First John chapter two, you don't have to turn there, but it speaks of Jesus being an advocate. So he intercedes, he stands in between, and he's also an advocate. The idea of an advocate is he gets down off the lawyer's bench and comes alongside and puts his arm around the shoulder and he says, I'm there with you. Um, the, the advocate. <laughs> Because of that, we can rest in his promise that the path of the righteous, like the light of dawn, shines brighter and brighter until full day. And then if we could turn to 1 Thessalonians, I'm going to wrap up here, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And again, watch for the, the idea of light. the eternal good news. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16, I believe. Um, verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort or encourage one another with these words. So again, the light of dawn, the path of a righteous like the light of dawn shines brighter and brighter until full day. For chapter five, now as to the times and epochs, brethren, you have no need of anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night when they are saying peace and safety. Then destruction will come upon them suddenly, like labor pains on a woman with a child, and they will not escape. But you, brethren, are not in the darkness, that that day would overtake you like a thief, for you're all sons of light. Tie that in with Proverbs 4.18. And sons of the day, we're not of the night, nor of darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us be alert and sober. For those who sleep, do their sleeping at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we are of the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. So that would be our eternal hope. And I guess my point of application would be, memorize Proverbs 4.18, if you haven't by now. Um, you've heard it quite a few times put it up on the refrigerator, put it somewhere, and just think of all the other verses that we've tied it into. Um, the path, the righteous, like the light of dawn, shines brighter and brighter until full day, knowing that we have an advocate, one who intercedes, the one who's coming back, the one who's faithful, the one who's gone up to prepare a place for us that where he is, we may also be in it. He's going to receive us to himself, that personal touch. 
So if we could close in prayer, just thank you, Father, for the truth, the compass that we have in you, and uh, help us to have that eternal perspective, that godly perspective. Um, in Ecclesiastes, we see that life without you is futile, it's empty, it doesn't work, and we're not designed to live that life. <clears throat> we're designed to, to be in you. And uh, I just pray, help us to remember that day by day, that natural tendency to forget. Help us to take hold of instruction and guard it and embrace wisdom day by day, moment by moment, path as we walk that path step by step. I pray for that. And when we're tempted to take that one step down that path that we're not to enter, to remember that and to think first and to turn back and just to enjoy you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.